Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter, and today we're doing day five, part two of owning your Cricut. So day one was all the tools that you need, the bare essentials and the overall Cricut, um, how to open the doors, change blades, etc. Day two is an overview of design space to get you started so that you can start doing your projects. Day three, these are the extras that I feel like you need. Creative Fabrica, main type, and that gives you access to pretty much all the fonts and to do all the fun things that we see on beautiful projects. Um, day four are all the extras, mainly on Amazon, all the extra things that you need to make beautiful craft projects. And then day five, we went and made a project in design space. And then part two is here we go. <laughs> all right. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I totally appreciate all the help that I can get. Okay. If you remember, and I zoom this in so that you can see the XO has the middle parts of the O that we actually need to save to, to keep those pieces. Um, I didn't mind so much on this one because it's just the two little pieces there, but if you were doing a phrase or a long name with lots of E's, A's, O's, D's, B's, etc., where you need to keep track of these little pieces, I would probably not do it that way. <laughs> I would either do it in HTV so I can iron it on really quickly, um, and you can iron on to cardstock. Um, or I would slice it out like we did for the name Charlotte on the gift tag, which we're going to show you in a second. So, all right, I, I took this off the mat, but I kept some things on the mat. So I'm going to show you right now. And I'm going to try to keep in mind that I have a smaller screen today because it's super up close. All right, here we go. So this is the, uh, the box. So this is a brand new map. And you can tell because look how clean that is and it's sticky. Um, one of the things that I mentioned yesterday was how to peel things off the mat. So I like to pop it a little bit, not pop it where you crack the mat, but you can see, I'm just going to lift this up, pop this up a little bit over here. And when I'm pulling this off, I'm always pulling in the opposite direction. I never want to curl it over because that's going to curl your paper and look at how this comes off. It's straight. I don't need to flip this mat over and get it all dirty. I just, I'm just not a fan. <laughs> all right, I cut this twice. So that's why we have two of these little guys. And then this, I'm just gonna peel off. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. And the one thing that we talked about in the last video was I like cut lines, I don't like score lines, but this was a project done by someone in the design space community. I didn't want to edit the file, so I didn't have the right tools that she wanted to use. So I had to use the embossing tool or the debossing tool. And so I've got score lines. You can barely see them. So that's why I'm not, it's not a favorite of mine. But in this case, what I would do is I would grab a pair of scissors. I mean, not a pair of scissors, a ruler. Gosh, my mind, it went straight to the... Okay, I'm going to put this down on the score line because I can see it, but when I go to fold it, it's hard. So I'm going to put it on the score line so that I know where, to, where it goes. And then I'm just going to bend up. So I've got my crease of the... I've got the ruler there to help me maintain that correct piece where it's supposed to fold. And like I said, it's not my favorite, but we're gonna make it work. And that's, you know, a lot of projects are like that, where you start to do things and then you just have to wing it to make it work. Cause I'm not gonna abandon it at this point. So I'm gonna do that and I'm just gonna fold it all the way. Every score line I'm going to want to fold. That makes it easier to, um, to put together the project. I'd rather um, fold now than once it's once you start to assemble it. It's really hard to fold some of these pieces. Um, I am using basil paper, which you can get on 12 by 12 cardstock, or you can get at Joann's, depending on how good your Joann's is in the open cardstock section. So, okay, got almost everything. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is, I do like to fold in both directions. It just gives you a better crease line 
and makes for an easier assembly portion. We're gonna glue these little tabbies, okay? So I'm gonna fold it this way. All right, so the easiest way is the long way over here. I'm gonna fold this in. And I'm gonna glue this part and put it in like this. Um, I'm using Barely Art glue. It's the best glue for cardstock. And if you like this glue holder, it's so stinking cute. Look at that. I know. I don't need it, but I love it. So I had to have it. <laughs> it's from Whimsical Wishes. Um, I'll link it below. All right. So first thing is on the long side. This tab is what we're going to do. So I'm going to put glue on here. And I'm just going to fold it in. And what's nice about Barely Art Glue is it gives you time to make adjustments. Not too much time where like it takes forever to glue, but it gives me just enough time to make the right adjustments that I want. And then when I'm gluing something like this, what I do like to do is grab paper clips and have it hold it in place while it dries. Actually, I don't even need it, it's dry. So I'm just gonna press down, make sure it's good. Okay, so here is our box, and basically our top and bottoms look the same. And then you've got your top up here. Oops, and I didn't even bend this one. It's hard to see that crease mark. So. Alright, so just for stability, I am going to, I'm going to pop this open. This didn't glue all that well. I'm going to put a little bit more glue here and hold it in place. And then I'm going to put glue here on the bottom. So I'm going to pop this open. Slide it in. And I'm just going to pop it open so that I can make sure that my glue is attaching itself basically. All right, I think that's it. So we've got our box. That's pretty much our box right there. Super cute, right? Okay, let's go to the fun part. I'm gonna grab my mat. Um, okay, so if you remember, I wanted, we cut out Charlotte on top, which is on this side. And sometimes you're gonna get a clean cut and sometimes you're not. That's going to happen. This is really thin. It's really small, um, which is why I was saying, you know, on something like this, see how like it didn't, we can, I can salvage this a little bit, but I, we have a little bit of a problem. Um, it just didn't cut all that well. And so it's, you know, it's a headache. I don't want to deal with it. So that's why I like iron on, or we slice it out of the, the bottom piece and let's see if I can do it this way. So one of them cut pretty cleanly and the other one did it. This one's still hanging on. Okay. What happened there? Okay. Let me get my spatula. So 
So out of the two I cut, only one was salvageable. And this one is like ready to get on my nerves as well. <laughs> and it's not pretty. So when it's this delicate and the paper isn't, the paper can't be good enough. If it's too thick, it's hard. If it's too thin, it's hard. So for something this delicate, it needs to be perfect and the, the shape is kind of ruined. So that's why I wanted to show you that. That's why sometimes you slice out or you use a different material. Okay, let's show you what the white one looks like. Now the same thing with the white. One of them cut out well, this one did. This one didn't. You can see it just didn't, it popped, it, I don't know. I did everything that I could to make sure that it was a good cut and it just wasn't. I have a brand new mat, I have a brand new blade, I use my brayer and sometimes it just, it just doesn't. And it is what it is. <laughs> So this is, so see, this one looks so much better, right? So Charlotte cuts out and then it's going to be on, the pink is going to pop through. So it's really cute. And then it's going to go on this, which gives it a little bit more of a pop. Super cute, right? Okay. So we've got that. This one just isn't even going to work. Let me see. Yeah, my E is, my E is a little, oh, you know what? I think I can save it. I think I can do this with my blade. So, let's see if I can. Oh, I think I did it. Ah, I saved it. <laughs> so it does say Charlotte. Oh my gosh. So this is my pink blade from Excel Blades and it is super sharp. It's got that fit grip. I'm I use this for my off the mat and apparently also to fix mistakes. All right, so let's get rolling. We're gonna put these together. If you remember, I wanted to layer these or stack them. So I'm gonna be using my Cubies from Barely Art. I'm gonna put it behind here. And this just gives it a little bit extra. Okay, so we'll do that here. What I like about the Barely Art QBs um, is that they are super sticky. So you can see them cheaper on um, at the Dollar Tree, but they will fall off and you need to reinforce them. So I do like my QBs from Barely Art. All right, let's put this on. Now the important thing with any um, adhesive is that you push really hard on it. The pressure is what makes it stick well, and the quality of it. But one of the things that you need to do is you need to kind of basically activate it. So we're pressing it down, making sure that both sides of the adhesive is sticking to the cardstock. And then we're gonna put a big one on here in the back. And for this one, I am gonna use these because they're thicker or bigger. These are from the Dollar Tree. They're bigger, so I feel a little bit more safe with uh, these on, and I have three of them. So I'm gonna line that up. And look at that tag, it's so cute, right? It's just nice and like more than like just a flat, you know, cardstock project. Okay, so we've got this. Let's put the XO on there. Let's see how did they do it. They put it where? It's on the side of the box because you're going to have ribbon and then you're going to have this tag hanging down. So let's put this down. Um, let's see, we've got the white on here, which I think we can put. We're going to make this pop out as well. I'm going to turn on my glue gun because this is going to be harder to um, 
put pressure on because it, the box is kind of, you know, it's cardstock and we just folded it. So it's not like super, super strong. It's stable, but I want to be able to press this down. So I'm going to use my hot glue gun. But before we do that, let's put down our other pieces. This goes on here. So I'm going to take out my glue. Barely Art Glue has the precision tip, which allows us to put glue on these teeny little pieces. And while it's drying in the first few seconds, I just want to make sure that my ends are, are down and anchoring itself to the bottom piece. And look at it's not going to bend. It makes sure, you know, it's, it's great. All right, let's put this little guy on. And sometimes like that just happened. It's nice to have a pair of tweezers, I know, and do this. And then we need the two little insides of the O. That's so cute. Um, you know how we were talking earlier about that this is not the way I want to hold it that thing can pop off any second so <laughs> just want to make sure like with the glue it doesn't plop down glue side down that has definitely happened before so cute right all right so we'll take this off um, you know what, my glue gun is not turning on. So I'm gonna use Barely Art Glue. I'm gonna use half adhesive, half Barely Art Glue. So on one of them, I'm gonna put this on. And I'm gonna put it on. So cute. Put your little whatever goodies in there. Plop a ribbon on there with your gift tag and you have a cute little box. You can even, you know what, I mean this would be um, a fun Valentine's Day craft if you have your kids doing it. So it's easy to cut and this is easy to assemble and you can help them with it. And you don't have to use a hot glue gun because you saw me using Barely Art Glue. So, alright, I hope that was helpful. Please use your Cricut, it's so fun. and. Um, if you need more help from me, I do have a workshop coming up in February. It's XOXO Craft Girls, and it's gonna be in Texas. So if you're out in Texas, please join me. If you're not, you can do the Zoom classes with me the first weekend in February. So it's Feb that first weekend in February are the Zoom classes. Second weekend in February, Valentine's Day weekend, Valentine's Day weekend will be in Texas. All the information is in the link below. And uh, yeah, happy crafting and thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy your cricket and happy holidays. Bye.